Hi, welcome to another video in my series on divisibility tests where we look at proving if something's divisible by a particular number and use mathematical induction to prove it. And I've got an example here where we've got to show that n cubed plus 3n squared minus 10n is divisible by 3 for all positive integers. And what we do is we start off by defining, say, f of n as being the expression that we're given. In this case, n cubed plus 3n squared minus 10n. Now, if you're not sure about mathematical induction, just briefly, what we need to do is show that our statement works when n is equal to 1. Then we assume it's true for n equals some positive integer, say k, and go on to prove on that basis that it is true for n equals k plus 1. And then if that is the case, that it's true for n equals k plus 1, then we know it must be true for all positive integers because we would have proved that it's true for n equals 1, so it must be true for n equals 2. And if true for n equals 2, it would be true for n equals 3, 4, 5, and so on. Okay, so we first of all check out to see then whether this expression is going to be divisible by 3 when n equals 1. So we'll just put therefore f of 1. We'll work out what we get here. I'll show the working. Okay, so we've got 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 10 times 1. Well, what we've got here is 1 plus 3, which is 4, take away 10, which equals minus 6. So therefore, we can see that it is divisible by 3. So let's just put, therefore, true, okay, for n equals 1. Okay, we've got that then. We now move on to the next stage, which is to assume that this is true for some positive integer value of n. Let's say for n equals k. And if that's the case, we therefore have f of k must be equal to k cubed plus 3k squared minus 10k. So we'll just write that in here, that f of k would be equal to k cubed plus 3k squared minus 10k. Okay, that expression there, we're assuming it's true for n equals k, so we're saying it is divisible by 3. So we just put that in, is divisible by 3. Now, when we're doing these divisibility tests, we always look at working out what f of k plus 1 is, and then minus f of k. So this is an important step to always do. And you'll see how this evolves as we work through this now, why we do this. Anyway, f of k plus 1, what's that going to be? Substitute for n k plus 1. So we're going to have k plus 1 all cubed, k plus 1 all cubed, and then plus 3 lots of k plus 1 all squared, 3 lots of k plus 1 all squared, and then minus 10 lots of k plus 1. So that is f of k plus 1. Now we need to subtract f of k. So subtract k cubed plus 3k squared minus 10k. So we just put that in brackets, minus k cubed plus 3k squared minus 10k. Okay, we need to expand this out now. So if we take k plus 1 all cubed and expand that out, you're going to get k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k and then plus 1. Now when it comes to this next term, if we expand k plus 1 all squared, we're going to get k squared plus 2k plus 1, and then we need to multiply it by the 3. So we're going to get plus 3k squared plus 6k plus 3. Now for this next term, if we multiply minus 10 into that bracket, we get minus 10k 
minus 10 and then multiply this bracket out we end up with minus k cubed minus 3k squared plus 10k. Now if you group the terms together what you find you get is the k cubed terms cancel out. If we look at the k squared terms we end up with 3k squared, 3k squared, that's 6k squared, minus 3k squared there. So that's going to be back to 3k squared. Looking at the k terms, we've got 3k plus 6k, which is 9k, and plus 10k and minus 10k, well, they cancel out. So we're just left with 9k. And as for the constants, we've got 1 and 3 is 4 minus 10 is minus 6 so we've got that and I can see that we've got 3 is a common factor so we can pull out 3 as a common factor that's going to give us 3 bracket k squared plus 3k minus 2 okay so we've now worked out what f of k plus 1 minus f of k is and we always do that kind of thing as I said earlier for these divisibility tests. So we're going to come down here. We should be able to squeeze this in here. Now, if we add f of k to both sides, what we're therefore going to have is f of k plus 1 equals, and then we've got our expression here, 3 lots of k squared plus 3k minus 2. And then we're adding f of k to both sides. So put plus f of k there. So we always do this step. Now what you should find in questions like this is that both your terms are going to be divisible by whatever number you're trying to test. In this case 3. And we can see that this is true because we assumed that f of k was divisible by 3. So we know this term is divisible by 3. And clearly this term is divisible by 3 because in this bracket, knowing that k is an integer, we've got an integer value. An integer plus an integer, take away an integer, gives us an integer. Multiply that integer by 3. And so therefore we know that this is divisible by 3. So both terms are divisible by 3, which means that f of k plus 1 must be divisible by 3. But we should write this down, so if you're producing a solution to this question, I'm going to write something like, since both terms, okay, let's just put both terms are divisible by 3, divisible by 3, then what we know is that f of k plus 1 must also be divisible by 3 is divisible by 3. Okay so we've now seen that if true for n equals k remember we assumed that statement was true then what we've seen now is that then it is true for n equals k plus 1. n equals k plus 1. Now on that basis we've already seen earlier, we proved earlier that it was true for n equals 1. So if it's true for n equals 1 then we know that it must be true for n equals 2. And if true for n equals 2, it's true for the next one up, 3. And then it must be true for 4, 5, and so on. So therefore, it must be true for all positive integers. So n is a member of the positive integer set. And there you have your proof. So when you're doing these divisibility tests then, Make sure that you carry out this step here, f of k plus 1 minus f of k. Then add f of k to both sides, and you should find that the two terms that you've got are then divisible by...
by the number that you're trying to prove that it's divisible by. And then you just do your typical ending to problems like this. All right, so that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial.